Yat e she e Donovan P. and Shia, Nakre, the Nan and Slaw, Zilka, the Nan, Kiaani, a Bashin, my Deskis in that state, not or the Nat Kachi need at Chanel, old late and last month I done a shop. Ah, could old lay, um, Sehosh Gizni, e and I not lish. Aro, um, the Neven also, Bahran, um, e she e not lish, Aro not ani nishlon. So that's a bit of my introduction in um, the Navajo language. Um, so as always, as proper protocol to be able to introduce um, ourselves. Um, so just in case we do have uh, relatives out and about. And uh, so anybody listening, um, they'll know, uh, you know, uh, that it's it's a relative that's uh, listening or <laughs> that's uh, uh, presenting. Okay, yeah. So um, we do have three locations uh, for the Navajo Nation Library. Um, so we have the main library in Winter Rock. Um, and then we have one out in Kianta, um, out towards Kianta, Arizona, near the Utah-Arizona uh, state border. And then we also have another location out in Torreon, New Mexico, um, which is located on the far east end of the Navajo Nation. Um, and that neighbors with the uh, Hickory Apache Tribal Nation, as well as the Pueblo Himish. Um, so they're, um, you know, neighboring um, um, tribal nations that are also near the Navajo Nation. Uh, so... In, in the case uh, for the Navajo Nation, we have what it's called a uh, plan of operation. Uh, so that's kind of um, a kind of guideline as far as uh, what, you know, um, the, the type of program that we are. And, um, you know, because we're also housed under the uh, Department of Dine Education. And based on my own experiences, a lot of um, libraries on tribal nations are also housed under their own Department of Education. Uh, so the main, um, so the main library once again is out in the Wonder Rock area, and we are also um, nest nested within the visitor center or the Library Museum and Visitor Center, uh, which was established back in 1997. Uh, so it was a state-of-the-art building that was established. To, um, be almost as a knowledge and information resource uh, for the Diné or for Navajo people there. And uh, so generally we, when we do like um, our goals, um, generally that's um, just to share with um, a lot of the other departments and also with uh, council to let them know that these are the different things that we're doing. Uh, so as of 2021 was when we last updated our plan of operations so that we can also include the community library initiative, is, which will also cover um, going forward. Um, and then so, you know, generally we just want to provide um, information, educational resources, um, but also start building in the cultural programming portion into what we're doing as well. Um, language revitalization, um, doing like weaving workshops, uh, even at potentially do like a lot of silversmithing, as well as doing moccasin making. Um, so these are kind of ideas that we try to tie in to say of um, how we, uh, you know, build upon our own knowledge and then how people, you know, build their competencies within it, but also um, looking into how as, you know, um, almost like, um, how, how would you say, like modern um, ideas and ideals that we can incorporate, like especially with uh, digital literacies and information literacies as well. Uh, so generally this presentation was actually uh, for um, also our Board of Education. I said, hey, you know, it also, um, it really uh, ties in very well with, you know, what we have to present. Um, so that's why there's a listing of our fiscal um, budget. Um, so that's what we generally operate under. And, um, and, and so generally for us, it's a lot of our staff and fringe benefits, um, our, um, salaries, I should say, and fringe benefits are the ones that really uh, take up our costs. And we have to, um, you know, really think um, in terms of how we can uh, provide services. And so it's one way that we were able to extend out more of our positions and have more um, incorporate more as much as we can in the library. Um, so we do have about 60,000 items in the catalog. Um, the um, point of interest that many people really like the li our library is to, um, oh, it, it uh, didn't adjust really well, but um, everyone really likes our special collections. Um, so, and based on my own experience at working in uh, the University of Arizona, and then um, doing internships like over at the uh, Sequoia National Research Center over at the University of Arkansas and Little Rock, um, that they have a really good amount of Native uh, and uh, some Navajo collection, but um, at the Navajo Nation Library Special Collections that we do have a lot of Indigenous 
um, a lot of Native American focused books, as well as uh, Navajo um, uh, materials. And some of those materials that don't actually circulate because, um, you know, those are um, the last of its kind at, at, at this point. So we definitely try to hold, um, be stingy <laughs> uh, with some of our resources. And some odd years ago that the Navajo Nation Library um, did um, partner up and then there was a memorandum of, un, of agreement between the Navajo Nation Library and the Navajo County Library District because we are located in the eastern, um, like near the northeast portion of uh, the state of Arizona. Um, we are technically in the Apache County, um, but um, we're but we had more cooperation with the Navajo County. Um, so uh, in that we also joined the Navajo County Library District. So that was back in 2013. Um, so all of our cattle are so all of our metadata information like that that goes into our catalog, um, they house it there at the um, headquarters at NCLD. Um, and that's also between us and the Kenta Branch Library and slowly we'll incorporate the Torion Branch Library as well, um, so that everyone does have access and they can see exactly what we have in these you know different locations and uh, there was a little encouragement at the bottom line you know to say hey sign up for a library card <laughs> uh, we're always uh, pushing for that so a huge part of what we're doing at the Navajo Nation Library um, when we think about um, how we're you know reimagining and how we're trying to um, trying to close the gaps in like information um, inequities and then in knowledge system as well as um, you know, the, the, the greater saying, or at least um, what I always used to remember hearing is the digital divide. Um, so because of COVID-19 um, that, uh, you know, they were able to actually see it. <laughs> They're actually able to see that, you know, we couldn't just go on to Zoom sessions. We couldn't do remote working. There's a lot of things that we were unable to do because we didn't have access to high-speed internet. In this case, having uh, broadband connections or having connections to fiber optic um, uh, connections. So with the E-Rate initiative, um, there was a consortium that was set up and established uh, back in 2002 uh, and 2020. Um, and that was to represent both the Navajo Nation Library and the Navajo Nation uh, Head Start programs. And so that was all together would um, establish fiber optic connections all across the Navajo Nation. And so this is 100 megs of uh, connection speed and it couldn't go all the way up to, um, a, you know, it could go up to a gigabyte of megs. And uh, and it's just ridiculous. Just, you know, <laughs> I was just thinking about those terminologies of, you know, how um, the rate of the, the speed of all these different uh, connections can go. And then now you have different things that um, are, you know, that that are supposed to be there to help. And I know that there is like Starlink that's even the most remote areas on the Navajo Nation actually utilize. Um, and then there are like QsNet, but um, I think the, the preference is to go high speed and to use something like Starlink. But in this case with the E-Rate initiative, if some of you aren't familiar with um, E-Rate, um, E-Rate does, um, at least with the um, Universal um, Service Administrative Company, um, through the FCC, they provide um, a, you know, a big chunk of funding through the federal government. And they do what's um, either, um, I'm trying to remember clearly, but I think it's an 85% match um, to do, you know, these large scale construction. And I believe that now, and uh, through the consortium that they were offered, you know, so many, um, so many billions, uh, or I should say millions of dollars uh, to be able to, con um, you know, have service providers come in and to bid on these contracts and to extend out, you know, very to basically just build these spider webs all across the Navajo Nation, um, especially to provide access uh, to the internet. Um, so as you can see here that um, in um, early 2021, USAC did award 50 million um, in order to uh, help for the, uh, the funding year of 2020, and that's to construct over 600 miles of fiber optics and that goes into 88 chapters 53 head start centers and the two branch and the two branch libraries as well um, so much of these contracts were awarded to um, so NTUAW is actually Navajo um, tele uh, communications utilities administration 
Um, and then they have a sub um, organization that's NTUA Wireless, NTUA W or NTUA Wireless. <laughs> um, yeah, so so many acronyms. It, it's it's really ridiculous as an administrator. Um, but there's also Sacred Winds Communications. Um, they mostly handle a lot of the contracts on the New Mexico side. NTUA W handles everything on the Arizona side. Um, and then also Internet Solutions actually uh, helps out with the more remote. Um, Navajo um, chapters, um, especially when we're looking at like uh, uh, Twijale, um, Alamo, as well as Rama, um, uh, remote na satellite Navajo chapters. So um, they have the good benefit of being able to have, you know, really good fiber optics that are built into their communities. And one really good example is actually Rama chapter or Pine Hill area um, on the New Mexico side that they have set up almost like a whole loop of um, internet connectivity. And um, that's all in part with the E-Rate initiative that they were able to establish these fiber optic lines all across um, their community. Um, and then as of late uh, 2021, the uh, USAC had awarded an additional uh, 17 million for the funding year of 2021. Um, and then there, and because it, it kind of formatted weird on here, but um, below that, it should say that as of late uh, November 22, uh, we were um, we we were notified that we did we did did get category two uh, funding, which is what will upgrade on overhaul a lot of like networking and that type of equipment um, there at the chapter houses. And so I should kind of go back a bit. Um, chapter houses for Navajo Nation, um, they are kind of like um, like if if Navajo Nation itself is you know one big uh, state, then each of the um, agencies kind of act as regions and then every chapter acts as its own state. And so the chapter houses kind of um, act in that way that they do get their own funding and then they have their own building to operate on, under their own administration. Um, so that's kind of the independence that the Navajo Nation uh, definitely um, encourages uh, many of these chapter houses to act as. And uh, so these are what's funding a lot of these chapter houses in order to have these connections. Um, and then so, you know, there has been this kind of weird thing of uh, what do we call these? Do we call these chapter houses, uh, chapter house libraries, E-rate libraries? And when we um, did consult with um, the state of Arizona and the state of New Mexico libraries, um, you know, no one liked <laughs> no one liked the idea. Um, so in, in kind of being able to rebrand and refocus a lot of that, we decided that community library is the best way to describe it. Um, because chapter houses are of the community. So, you know, um, part of that is also a community library. Um, so our task under this initiative is to establish uh, community library services um, at each of these um, locations. And uh, so some of them are, you know, wanting to have this um, potential to also become branch libraries. So when we, you know, so it, it, these are kind of you know, there's already systems and programs that are set up uh, when we think about, you know, public libraries in general, that, you know, all these things have already been established, set up and policies and everything. So when someone leaves that when somebody comes in that, you know, they're updated with everything. So in this case, we're having to really uh, learn on our own about how to do that as well. And to um, really kind of wake a sleeping giant that the Navajo Nation is. So, and that also goes with information and then our library services too. Um, but yeah, this kind of goes over definitely the inequities, the digital divide, um, especially that COVID-19, um, you know, because we're still in the pandemic. And then, um, but the stay at home orders were the ones that are, were, was the, the, the thing that kicked off, uh, that made us, that made everybody realize just how behind that the Navajo Nation was. So, um, so this was all part of, you know, going into, um, factored into why, you know, everything had to be um, set up going forward. Um, and many of the chapter houses, they don't have, you know, a lot of space in them. And um, so because of it, um, both the state libraries in Arizona and New Mexico had agreed to waive the requirement of having a physically circulating uh, library. So they went ahead and approved that many um, can use digital resources as a way to say that this is an equal measure. And that um, so, um, but there is still that potential where the requirement will uh, come back around. But many of these sites and locations really do need either an upgraded building or they do need 
um, you know, a new space altogether. And so those are things that we are definitely looking at exploring, um, especially updating our plan of operation to say that, you know, we don't, you know, we no longer maintain, but we also build libraries as well. So um, when we think about <laughs> um, building new services and building all these new things that, um, you know, this is on our end that it, it's like, you know, just this watershed moment that, these are things that people really want and these are things that they really need. And so centering that back onto and focusing with community libraries is one way that we can start extending um, people's, um, expanding their knowledges um, in a way that we provide as much information as we can and to make sure that um, there is a way that they're navigating towards that. Um, so all together, um, if we were to count up the different contracts that are there, there's about 96 chapter houses um, a, across both Navajo Nation, uh, I mean, <laughs> across Arizona and New Mexico. And altogether, there's about 128 chapter houses. So um, so right now with the contracts, we are able to do 96, but um, we are leaving it um, in the air to be able to do um, all 128. So uh, essentially the Navajo Nation library system will go from um, the, the um, the three branch libraries into, you know, a larger, larger system. Um, so definitely one of the larger uh, tribal um, library systems that um, that would be set up across the, um, you know, within the, U the U.S. So, uh, <laughs> but um, as of yesterday, we actually have 30 of the 56 um, based on the funding year 2020 um, that have done the training and have been um, given their uh, Wi-Fi connections, as well as given a computer, Chromebooks, and then we have um, provided a lot of the training so that they are able to uh, help many of the many of the chapter members navigate towards uh, digital resources. Um, if they need job, um, you know, resources, services, that we do have it um, built into these sites that they can look through. And then that we have also been able to do like reference interviews and things like that, where that's something that many of the staff members are able to understand and know, um, because uh, as with any tribal community, sometimes the trouble, I think the running joke is that, you know, customer service is drastically needed for any, um, you know, tribal community, um, you know, like um, that um, show reservation dogs, you know, nowhere is that really highlighted more than what, <laughs> um, you know, than these characters when they have to go to like the, the um, IHS or when they have to go to administrative offices that, um, it's like, wow, like they could really, you know, do a lot more. <laughs> um, so that's part of um, the training too. So, uh, and so this is kind of where we do focus um, for the tribal, um, for the community library training. Um, so definitely customer service strategies, privacy, confidentiality, and what's called er uh, reference interview. Um, so we do our orientation so much like uh, how, you know, I was able to kind of explain what the situation was, uh, what our um, library system looks like at a, at a glance. And then also to the, the, the resources um, that we do have. So we do have access to electronic books like the big ones, especially uh, Libby, uh, Cloud Library, uh, Freeding, and then um, especially being able to pinpoint everybody towards um, Gale Pages as well, because that's another that um, provides a lot of research and other databases. And it's very specific as to what type of databases that they do offer. And um, of course, you know, many of you that um, do have access or are, are working with your university library, you know, uh, being able to look through, um, you know, your favorite ones. I'm, um, and I've been losing <laughs> um, because I remember writing my whole thesis and that's all I ever had to use was all my library resources at the University of Arizona. So another part of really changing what we're doing um, at the Navajo Nation Library, because my predecessor, um, you know, there were some programs and events that uh, he was able to um, want to be a part of. But I think um, for us, I think the when I first stepped onto the position was to um, really think about and reevaluate the different um, uh, programs and events that we could set up um, there at the Navajo Nation Library. Uh, so one example that we do have is right here is the Trunk or Treat, um, which was held back in October of 2021. Um, so we definitely had um, 
a lot of people. <laughs> uh, we had a, a, a really good amount that we uh, filled up the whole parking lot um, just outside of the building. So we were really um, happy to work and coordinate with the Navajo Nation Museum, ILAUNCH, First Things First, all these different programs and organizations that really do work closely with the Navajo Nation. And then, of course, um, the individual in the center is our Miss Navajo Nation, um, Niagara Rockbridge, who is actually uh, Miss Navajo from uh, 2021 to 2022. So, um, but we were able to host a trunk or treat um, there um, at the uh, Museum uh, Library and Visitor Center. Um, and so another, um, another event that we did hold was actually a blind date with a book. Uh, so um, that was uh, February of uh, last year. Um, so we were able to set up displays and do things like that. Um, but the funny part was having the uh, the blind date with the book um, and actually having the covers um, covered. And so when people come in, they would be like, well, what's all this? Or, you know, is this, can I take this? It's like, yeah, go ahead. And um, so that was another way that we were able to do like our book distribution because um, we got a, um, um, I think, uh, I'm trying to count up the number, but about around 100,000 books from the Barnes and Noble Foundation. Um, so we got a whole lot of new books from them. And uh, so we use that as a way to distribute uh, when we do outreach programs or if we because um, we also take boxes and boxes to different chapter houses. Um, so some of them that are you know housing the community library. Um, that they do actually set them up as checking out. So um, the really interesting part is some of them actually do use like the old um, card cataloging. So um, especially to say what the has been checked out because we're, you know, because of our budget constraints that we are unable to, you know, expand out our digital um, or our electronic cataloging system. So that's something that we are definitely looking at to do with external funds to um, expand that out so that um, uh, many of the community libraries across the Navajo Nation are able to um, you know, use a scanner and to check books in and out. And then essentially the main library will be the hub where they send all the books and then we can catalog and properly document, uh, provide the metadata, the descriptions, um, things like that, that we can um, do for them and then give to them. And then of course they can circulate the item. And so the other program that we actually did was this uh, read across the Navajo Nation. Um, so at the time we did have uh, Miss Navajo Nation, um, the Navajo Nation president, Jonathan Nez, um, the Navajo Nation first lady, um, uh, Fafilia Nez. And then we also had the uh, Navajo Nation second lady, uh, Dottie Lizer, who is um, on the, the far right. Um, so uh, we also did um, also do a proclamation and that was the read across uh, Navajo Nation. <laughs> um, so we were able to do read across America. And then also too, where um, at the time we did uh, have the focus with Dr. Seuss and, but this year we'll actually be more focused on um, read across America, even though it's, you know, Dr. Seuss books are very whimsical um, that we do want to focus, um, essentially start focusing on indigenous readings and authors, as well as the same thing with Navajo, um, uh, titles, authors, you know, readings, things like that. So, but it was a lot of fun to host this uh, read across uh, Navajo Nation, um, especially to be able to have the four um, do their own types of, um, do their readings as well. Um, so this year that we are looking to have different little substations and then individuals can come in and do, um, you know, they can read to the, the, all that do come by. Uh, so for some of you, if you're looking to add uh, some books into your library, or if you're already working at a, you know, at your own library, um, whether, you know, you're at a public library or a tribal library or what have you, um, these two individuals have books out that are currently just phenomenal books that do, um, they have out. Um, so, um, Daniel Vandiver as, um, the author of Horizon, as well as Fallen Line Holden, and then Brian Young, um, the author of Healer of the Water Monster, um, so both of them, uh, you know, gaining a lot of momentum, you know, for um, these books that they wrote and uh, even being awarded from the American Indian Library Association. So, you know, and this is I believe that is the first time that um, at one time, you know, two individuals, two authors uh, from a tribal community were awarded at the same time. So Daniel and Brian uh, both being Dene, that we also wanted to celebrate them. And this was all during uh, the Navajo Nation Fair. So the main Navajo Nation Fair 
um, happens uh, around, you know, the beginning of September. Um, so we were able to kind of use that momentum to also uh, advertise and to really uh, promote this event to have uh, Brian and Daniel and to present them with plaques and certificates and to really, you know, have everybody join us because they were able to do their own re their own readings uh, for their book for both of their books. And um, so that, you know, we were very extremely fortunate to be able to host them uh, and then to also have uh, President Nez join us um, during this event and then also Miss Navajo as well. So um, it was almost a who's who of, <laughs> of um, you know, Navajo Nation for them to join us um, for this celebration. So um, I believe we do have it on our YouTube or our uh, Facebook page. So if you are interested in uh, kind of looking at the highlights, then you can do that on our Facebook as well. So another program that we were able to um, work with and to, um, to, to set up is also with the program called Kith and Kin. Uh, Kith and Kin, they, um, do, they, they were uh, coming in like every Wednesday and their focus was um, doing a lot of um, um, you know, like childcare, like, you know, what are best ways of cooking, you know, it's like basic um, lifestyles um, that they would help. Because if you're the one that's having to um, uh, baby, um, basically babysit or uh, taking care of children, then this is one way that um, they help you to, you know, do other things besides like saying, hey, there's a TV or, you know, here's a tablet or something like that. But um, to also do cognitive, um, um, to develop, you know, their brain, um, to do, you know, have all these different um, activities that they can do. And then also to do like food um, handling, uh, learning, you know, what types of recipes are good and even providing like a recipe book. Um, and then some that did bring their little ones that they were the little ones that were tended to um, by their assistants. So they would do like little games, do, um, you know, different drawings, activities, um, so it was a really good program that was really um, set up for individuals that, you know, um, assisted and took care of their of little ones. And uh, when we did offer it during the summer, um, we would have, you know, um, individuals that were like in high school and they would um, be they would have to take care of their siblings, their younger siblings, because their parents would be, you know, at work from eight to five. So there's that time frame from three to five o'clock that they had to figure out like, hey, you know, what can I do to cook or what can I do to entertain, you know, my siblings? Uh, so Kith and Kin was a really good program um, that we were a fortunate to um, host uh, along with the individuals um, um, over at First Things First. And so this past October, uh, we did host, uh, once again, the Trunk or Treat with the Navajo Nation Museum. Um, and then same thing, we just had a lot of people come to <laughs> um, come to the event. And um, um, and um, I really wish I was able to uh, um, have, you know, if you could zoom in or look at um, some of the pictures in here, um, there was, you know, a variety of costumes that were really, um, they, it, it was it was really, really fun to see a lot of individuals really dress up and they, um, at the end of the evening that we were able to do a costume contest with the Navajo Nation Museum. So individuals were able to get prizes for having, you know, really good costumes. But um, a, a lot of these things that we really do with the Navajo Nation Library is do book distribution. So um, and then we also have, um, you know, like binders and things like that, pencils, uh, paper, um, you know, just as much as we can to distribute out. So, yeah, there you go. <laughs> so you can see some of the costumes that we did have, like the little Sanderson sisters, uh, little Tuscan Raider to the right. Um, and then somebody actually dressed up as the uh, former uh, president, uh, Jonathan Nez. Um, so that'll be like in the middle picture. Um, so that that it was just completely hilarious. And then we had um, so if you look towards the bottom, that there was somebody who did dress up as like a cone head. Um, you know, people that did bring in like the little dinosaur Scooby Doo costume, and then somebody did dress up as uh, the Mandalorian. So um, you know, everyone just tapping into um, their favorite um, movies, television shows, things like that, and joining us. <laughs> And so, and then one of the other, uh, uh, as of uh, last month, we actually hosted this uh, Navajo Tea and Watch uh, Ma'i Stories. Uh, so back in the um, late 70s, they uh, did an animation of Coyote Stories. 
Um, so that was uh, one way of doing cultural and language preservation. And so through these stories, it was just all completely recorded and dubbed in the Navajo language. Uh, so we happened to have the digital copies um, in our special collections. Uh, so this was one way that we were able to promote and uh, really um, get individuals to come out for um, to watch the coyote stories. And so, uh, and then the other benefit was, of course, uh, as refreshments to serve Navajo tea and uh, serve blue corn mush as well. So those being uh, traditional foods uh, that we were able to incorporate into this type of program. And um, we had a good turnout. And um, then we have a new Miss uh, Miss Navajo Nation uh, who did join us, uh, Valentina um, uh, Klitso, because she uh, she's the new new uh, Miss Navajo from twenty. Uh, two to 23 um, years. <laughs> and so for just about the 2021, as well as the 2023, our, our 2021 and 2022, those fiscal years, we actually had virtual readings. Uh, we did have uh, Daniel Vanderbilt as well as uh, Brian Young uh, do virtual readings of their books. Um, but uh, this year we um, decided to definitely explore um, having author readings and visits um, so that you know, the authors can actually come to the library. Um, so the individual that we did have, um, you can go ahead and zoom out so you know people can see um, the, the title of this book. Um, but this is also another book that it, it's really, really good. Um, um, unfortunately, I, it, it's always tough for me to make time to actually read. I'm always reading memos, emails, and doing replies. <laughs> um, but, uh, but it was really good to hear this um, book on audiobook, which is Shudder from Ramona Emerson. Uh, so she did uh, let us know that she is uh, writing a part two to the book. So she wanted to do a three-part series for the book. And so that just made us uh, extremely happy to know that, you know, we could keep in contact with her and then she could provide her, um, you know, do her readings, but also provide her insight as to how she, you know, got her inspiration to write um, her debut novel. Um, so uh, we, we did have a really good turnout, even though like right here, it looks like, oh, like it's very sparse, but um, I think all, well, all together, um, face to face, we were able to get about 20 people. And then for um, our online, we're actually able to get um, about uh, 24 individuals that joined us on Zoom. Uh, so things like this, we definitely do try to do uh, hybrid uh, because um, just trying to utilize our fiber optics um, at the um, library that we are able to um, provide um, even, you know, continue to do online programs as well. Because um, even if they did, um, well, they did lift the mask mandates on the Navajo Nation. Uh, so masks are optional, um, but, you know, due to public uh, safety and everyone's concern for public health, um, that everyone still does, um, you know, do their best to, 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 keep one, to keep one another safe. So the other events that we definitely did have planned um, or we, we did plan out, um, you know, throughout the years. Um, so like especially uh, the Seed to Supper program um, that's done with the University of Arizona, especially their uh, cooperative um, based out of Apache County. So we were more than happy to host Anna Rita Begay, who um, does host the gardening and a lot of it's kind of basic gardening. So um, especially um, and the unique thing is using the soils and the um, seeds um, based off of around Navajo Nation that we could use, uh, utilize uh, within, you know, individuals joining could understand and know how to do that uh, in the area. So that's been a really good emphasis of being able to, you know, incorporate sustainability and individuals wanting to learn more about gardening. That's one way that they can do it. And then another one we um, hosted was actually uh, last year or in 22, about a couple months ago, um, was the Diabetes Awareness Fair. So that's our uh, connection and collaboration with like special diabetes program, as well as the Fort Defiance Hospital, uh, Navajo Nation Shopping Center, OPVP. So that we definitely um, had a really uh, fun time being able to um, set that up and then also do um, health literacy for individuals that were able to attend and having a turkey trot, and which was a lot of fun and I had a blast. Um, and then a documentary uh, with Lila June. Um, so the, the documentary was called Inhabited. Um, I don't know if, um, um, how much more time I have. Oh, we're on the same wavelength. I was just going to about to message you and say we have about 15 minutes. So if we can hopefully leave a little bit of time for questions, that would be awesome. Okay. 
Okay. Um, um, I'm trying to think of my slides <laughs> uh, from here because I think a lot of it kind of just goes over um, other um, programs and events that we were able to have. And then um, and then on our end where, um, so um, coming up for some of the events that we do have, uh, we do have the open mic, which will be next Friday. And then every Friday we have computer basics and then early childhood tips every Wednesday because we got a mini grant uh, to be able to um, have new um, children's books, toddlers books, um, and then making that available. And then being able to do um, like um, do these sessions where we do emphasize, you know, the need to reevaluate how we actually read to our little ones, um, because it's very different when we read, you know, to, um, you know, someone that's in elementary or someone that's in middle school or little ones that are or even individuals that are in high school, you know, because of their uh, development as they go along. Um, so it is really different when you have to read to, you know, your, your toddlers and, you know, um, you're away, your as, as we like to say in Navajo. Um, but that's, um, but the, it's very important to kind of re, um, kind of reevaluate things like that. And so, um, so this kind of highlights uh, what we're trying to do with our external funds. Um, so the after school and summer programming, that's something that we're trying to, uh, um, because it's all been finally settled, but it has to be spent by June 30th. And then we're definitely uh, working to uh, have language and linguistics built out on the New Mexico side. And then, um, so we had a really good um, uh, grant from the state of, um, both of these are both coming from the state of New Mexico. Um, so our concerns, of course, spending it in a timely manner, um, only because of our internal processes also gets in the way. Uh, yeah, so definitely <laughs> more information about external funds. Um, yeah, so, I mean, it's just um, the internal side of it that really does um, poses a problem because of how much we're trying to push for advancements and evolution at the Navajo Nation Library, um, that it, it just feels like the Navajo Nation itself isn't <laughs> necessarily ready. Um, I should say more specifically, our tribal government um, is, you know, still taking steps as far as uh, examining and trying to uh, catch up to a lot of different sources that are coming in, um, especially when it comes to financial um, um, assistance. Uh, and this kind of just highlights it really quickly. And so the outlook for us is that, um, you know, definitely turning a lot of the community libraries into branch libraries um, so that they're actually physically circulating libraries. Many are interested in doing that and continually providing and investing into digital, digital resources, services that will, you know, across the Navajo Nation, establish the Navajo Nation Digital Library. Uh, we also want to invest into our own library, uh, integrated library system or ILS. Uh, so that we can, you know, be self-sustaining and self-sufficient. And this idea of being able to um, have, you know, our, our own data, especially now that it, it's really emphasized for um, um, digital sovereignty or data sovereignty as well. So we can also extend that um, towards, you know, these, um, these different um, items that we do have out there. And then of course, to be able to update more tables, um, update our technology, our shelves, books, um, because all these things have been either donated or just given to us um, that, um, you know, with these external funds that we can revamp, upgrade, update, and really to bring um, the library itself into a more modern, um, a more modern library and to I think that's um, the goal of just about every program is to modernize um, you know our identities as far as who we are as a program who we are as departments and I think everything else on the rest of the slide kind of just highlights um, you know the challenges and issues but then that'll have a lot of our contact information um, so um, but yeah so I think um, I think I hit time so I do you know um, be able to ask questions <laughs> And Donovan, that was fantastic. Are you able to see the questions as they come into the chat or would you like me to read them out to you or how would you like uh, to do it? Yes, please. Yes. Um, okay. So I have it read, read out to me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, what I've seen so far, Ke'au would like to know, do the Ma each animations have English subtitles and are they publicly available to watch? Um, so um, for the Ma'i um, stories, um, they are actually only provided seasonally. Um, and so we do have it currently in our Facebook, but we will um, take it down because it's um, for us to follow traditional protocols. 
Um, and um, so for, you know, like our creation stories or any type of animal stories, um, you know, we, during the winter, it's okay to tell it because a lot of the animals are, um, you know, they, they go into hibernation, you know, they, they um, go into their burrows. So, you know, they won't be able to hear us, <laughs> um, especially um, because, you know, for us, the, the power and strength in our language is still being able to have that. And um, so, you know, because, um, um, yeah, so it's like we, you know, it, it, like essentially it's like you don't want somebody talking about you in front of you because <laughs> uh, sometimes it's like, hey, you know, well, I didn't know that. And um, so I think it's the same thing with how we do these stories. And the stories are all completely um, in the Navajo language. Um, so I don't think they've ever done like subtitles because they really wanted to uh, promote these animations to um to, to children um, so that they can get a, a hint of, you know, Navajo language, and then they could um, also um, um, try to, you know, pick out words, because if you look at, you know, like Finding Nemo, like that's in Navajo, and you can go to Disney Plus and actually hear the Navajo dub for that. And then it's the same thing with um, Star Wars, too, the, the first Star Wars that they also um, – have that completely in Navajo, but it's a dubbed in it. And then uh, as of recent, there's the Comanche um, movie, um, or um, they did a dub for the latest Predator movies. So um, so it's really good to see that a lot of these languages are being incorporated in, 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 a, in a mainstream type of um, venues or applications as well. Okay, thank you. We have another question that came in from Brianna. And Brianna states, regarding grants, do you have to compete with other state library systems when applying? Do you receive additional funding or grants from entities like the Bureau of Indian Affairs that is specific to tribal communities? Um, so for us, um, I think when it comes to, um, because we're not essentially, um, as much as we really want to, um, when we think about how sovereignty works, especially with tribal nations, you know, it almost um, the way that it's set up with the U.S. is, you know, you, you want these tribal communities to be on that level of um, states. But for us, because we're under, you know, still under like the state of Arizona, essentially uh, Navajo Nation proper, um, that we're under the state of Arizona, that essentially we just compete with other public library systems within the state. Um, and then, but the interesting part about New Mexico is that they are, you know, they're being very, um, very helpful towards tribal communities, especially with the Yazi Martinez versus state of New Mexico case, um, that the Navajo Nation is getting more funds because of that. But on our end, that we're trying to set up branch libraries on the New Mexico side, especially in larger populated uh, tribal communities like um, Shiprock, for example, that's one that we are looking to to uh, set up a, another branch library there um, and then have a uh, position uh, or even positions that we can have, you know, a library director there and then have um, their assistance as well. So um, so that, you know, this is kind of a really big way um, that we need to expand. And this is right away <laughs> um, that we need to input a lot of um um, other, um, you know, policies and other little uh, rules that we can implement uh, within the library so that we are consistent across the board. Um, and then uh, the second part, um, we don't generally try to deal with BIA because um, it's just um, always trying to deal with federal entities is always interesting. And then uh, the Navajo Nation itself is trying to be as separate as possible from BIA and BIE. Um, so I think that's part of um, that um, um what what's what's happening at least what we've seen um but you know that's something definitely we could also look into um look into um you know tap into as well because any type of external funding for us it, you know we'll definitely try to utilize because we definitely need as much assistance as we can because we're operating as kind of within a um within um you know like a bare bones type of situation so we were able to barely cover um, our staff, and then um, our fringe benefits as well. Okay, thank you. Looks like we've had a comment come in. It looks like this is Cindy Hole from uh, Bridging Knowledge. And she says, it's wonderful to hear about all of the programs and we appreciate hearing about the progress as well. Is there funding for the physical spaces to develop facilities for the chapter sites? This is Cindy, my computer died. <laughs> um, I don't know if you have <laughs> more to say yet or if you wanna go to the next one. 
Um, yeah, for that one. Um, so on the New Mexico side, we're definitely getting um, external funding from the state of New Mexico. So the, it could be um, where we are looking into where um, spaces can be expanded and renovated um, because spaces are at least the chapter houses on the New Mexico side are um, the ones that are under the community library initiative are wanting to actually set up as branch libraries. So um, that's something that we'll definitely look into, um, but definitely uh, some do have older buildings that they want to actually renovate or to modernize um, so that they can house, you know, their own library there. And then, of course, with the assistance from the state of New Mexico that we can, you know, populate with more books, tables, desks, things like that. So, um, yeah, so that, that that would be wonderful to start doing that with them. Great. Okay. Looks like we probably have time for one more um, question, which is any, uh, this is from Michelle, any recommendations on digital slash data sovereignty with establishing the custom ILS systems to incorporate the traditional ways of knowing for classification schemes to incorporate oral traditions, geography, and linguistics? Um, that would be I mean, awesome <laughs> um, if there was a, um, a system, but the one I can think of right now is like Mercatu. Mercatu has uh, definitely have the support and they're also open source and um, they're, they do have an interface that's easy to use. So I think that would be a really good um, system to um, really house a lot of archival and um, these, um, you know, things that are tangible. And then if they're in, intangible items that are recorded, um, especially when it comes to, you know, like songs, um, even um, ways of speech, um, ways of speaking, like even those can be preserved, like on a system um, like Merca 2. And then, um, of course, it can be um, um, incorporated with its own metadata, its own meta description. Um, it really depends on whom is all, you know, working on these things together that, that they can do that. And there is another group called Local Contexts. Um, that they also do provide like a new way of classifying, a new way of codifying, um, you know, these type of ideas, um, because there are, you know, initial steps that have been set up to where things like this can be preserved. But I think on that end, where it's a lot of digital and data sovereignty, I think these are new grounds that we're definitely exploring. And there are working groups that are, you know, building towards that. Um, and uh, I can try to think of individuals um, that, that are also helping towards those efforts, um, because uh, even like our own metadata, like what we have in our catalogs, you know, things like that also need to be protected. Um, and then as far as like any type of customization with ILS, uh, the big um, the big one that I often hear about is like COA um, from Bywater Solutions. Um, so that can be um, definitely um, revamped and uh, can be uh, because it's open source that, you know, these things can be built into it. So, um, I mean, it, it I think definitely the investment towards something like that is, is definitely there, but it's actually having the individuals to put this, you know, everything together. And um, and and um, I know for a while, Dinette College, um, they did definitely have their own ILS um, over in Salee, um, but just because of the upkeep and everything, they they weren't able to really um, keep a lot of their developers. That it it became very difficult for them to maintain it. Um, so they did go with a bigger um, ILS system, and that being more focused with um, academic libraries. But that's a good question, though. <laughs> a great question. Okay, um, we've had some more comments come through, but it looks like we're very close to the end of our session for tonight. And um, I just want to thank all of the participants and especially Donovan, thank you so, so much for sharing your wisdom and your experiences with us here at San Jose State. I know that the students really appreciate your time. Um, there is one more um, comment and that is um, Cindy is asking folks to email her for a survey link since she wasn't able to join on her computer. Her email is bkscholar21 at gmail.com if you want to email her after the session uh, to receive a link to the survey about this presentation. And I want to thank everyone for your participation, and especially Donovan, thank you so, so much for sharing your knowledge with us tonight. Oh, thank you all. And Cindy, thank you for inviting me. And Sheila, thank you for moderating. <laughs> uh, so yeah, thank you all. I, re I really enjoyed it. And it's always nice to um, 
boast about what's going on at the Navajo Nation Library. So I always like to say that it's not just, you know, focused on me, but it's definitely the whole system altogether. And what we do going forward, I couldn't do without, you know, my staff's help. So um, I, I applaud them for a lot of their hard work and efforts as we go forward. So, and, you know, thank you all for uh, allowing me to express from, as representative from the Navajo Nation Library.